What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we're going to be talking about a s'mores flavored tea and the Parker Duofold Centennial. So this tea, s'mores tea, um, is from a company called Teavana um, and it is awesome. I mean, there's actual marshmallows in here. Except I can't quite show you them. There they go. I was so scared to tip that over. Um, it's called s'mores and it's because it tastes sort of like s'mores. And I say sort of because there's a slight difference. Obviously, if you're going to eat the, the actual s'more versus drink tea, you're going to have slight differences. But it tastes pretty close. Um, it is an oolong tea, which means the caffeine level is fairly minimal. Um, especially, you know, if you consider like what a black tea would be. Um, this is definitely has less in it, which I appreciate. Um... This has way too many ingredients to list. I mean, there's a whole paragraph on here. Um, but if you go onto their website, their main tasting notes uh, says a rich cocoa blended with sweet Madagascar vanilla and toasted uh, oolong and matte finish. Um, it tastes to me pretty close to a s'mores. Um, not quite as sweet as I would expect it to be, um, but definitely pretty good. It got kind of a rich flavor, um, but you do need to steep it a little bit longer than what they suggest in order to get um, the full effect to me. Um, for an oolong tea, it's relatively inexpensive. Um, it's $6.99 for 50 grams, which is average for like a black tea, but for an oolong tea, that's relatively inexpensive, um, especially for like a full blend like this. Um, for oolong, for this one in particular, um, they recommend one and a half teaspoons of the tea leaves um, to be brewed at 105 degrees Fahrenheit um, for three minutes. I would say to do it for four minutes. I don't really care about the water temperature. I have done this at a full boil and I've never noticed a difference. Um, I would definitely recommend this tea if you can get to a tea vanna. Uh, they do sell in the States. They have their website. Um, it's quite tasty. So let's now talk about the Parker Center, Parker Duofold Centennial. So the Parker Duofold Centennial, as uh, the ivory finish, um, is beautiful. Um, I absolutely love the look and the finish of it. Um, it's primarily an ivory body with gold trim. On the finial, you have the Duofold logo which I'll show you a little bit closer up later. The Parker arrow clip, which is very, very like known, I guess. It's what they're known for. Um, two gold rings around the cap. You got one gold ring around the end barrel and then just nothing on the bottom. Um, this is a more modern Parker. Um, if you get one of the more vintage versions of this pen, um, then the barrel will be more straight instead of having it tapered here. Um, this also will not curve in quite as much. It'll be straight down. Um, and same with the top. You're not going to get that little curve in. It's going to be like basically more blockish. Um, <clears throat> that was your style back then. And uh, they've just kind of round off the edges a little bit in the newer versions. Um, the nib is gorgeous. Um, again, I'll try and get you a slightly better view of that. Um, it's 18 carats. This one's a medium nib. It's very smooth, very wet, uh, which you'll see in the writing sample as well. Um, for me, this pen is the perfect size and weight. Um, it fits very nicely in my hand, unposted. You can post it. Um, it's just push to post. However, it doesn't post very deeply. Um, so, sorry about shaking the camera. This line here um, is pretty much where it stops posting. So here's like kind of the lid and then it stops right there. So that line is pretty much right there. So it does not post very deeply. It does post, um, you know, I'm sure if you shook it a whole bunch, it would fall off. Um, but at that point it would become way too long, way too back heavy for me. Um, so I definitely don't post it, but I really, really enjoy the weight. Um, it's a relatively light pen. Um, it's, it's not like too heavy or anything because most of it is plastic. Um, but I really like the feel of it. 
Um, the grip section is very nice. It does taper down, but obviously, as you can see here, has a kind of a, a jet out right before the nib section. Um, so it will stop your fingers from sliding beyond the nib and getting all like covered and gunky. Um, so that's really nice. And it is long enough where my fingers don't rest on the threads, but if yours do, have no fear. They're super smooth um, and they're really, really nice feeling. And it's such a small step here that even that just feels like a natural progression of the pen. It doesn't feel like it gets in your way, or at least it doesn't feel like it gets in my way. Um, opening up the barrel to reveal that I am out of ink. Um, this is the um, standard international cartridge. Um, you can't eyedropper convert this pen even though the barrel is plastic because it does have all metal threading. The only thing I don't like about this one, and this isn't to do with the pen, it's more the fact that it's an ivory color. Um, and uh, again, like the Mont Blanc 149 video, this is not my pen. Um, this is a borrowed pen. I'll have the links and all that in the description below. Um, but there is some staining on the inside of the barrel. So the person that owned this pen before me, you can see right here. Um, and it is farther inside the barrel as well. You just can't really see it. Um, the person that owned this pen before me um, was obviously using a blue ink at some point. Um, and either they tried to eyedrop or convert it or had an accident or something. And it has stained the barrel. Um, there is marks in the cap as well but it's kind of hard to show you. Um, I actually cleaned the cap out pretty well, just with a Q-tip and some um, pen flush. And it actually did take away a fair amount of the staining, but it didn't do a whole lot for the body of the pen. So I'm not really too worried about it because all of the staining is on the inside of the pen. None of it is on the outside, um, which is really nice. Um, but I'm sure if you got like the black finish, the great, there's like, there's a crazy amount of finishes that you can get in this pen. Um, you wouldn't see that. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily be too concerned about it. Um, but I mean, that's really the only negative thing I can think about this. Price point wise is a little high, I think. Um, but I still like it. Uh, US dollars, you're gonna be looking at around 578 for this. There is a Parker Duofold International um, that is a little bit smaller of a pen that will also have a smaller price tag. Basically, it's the same thing. It's just on a smaller size. This is the Centennial, so it's the full size version. Um, Canadian dollars, you're basically, we're on par with the States. We're looking at 570. Um, right now for Canada, if you head over to stylo, S-T-Y-L-O dot C-A, um, they have this pen in ivory and I believe uh, the red color as well um, on sale for $349 and that's a pretty dang good price. So if you're really interested, I would hop over there really, really quickly because I don't know how long that sale is going to last and I don't know if there's going to be any left. Um, typically that website will only have things on sale until they run out of product. Um, the other colors that they sell are still full price though. Um, but I flip and love it. Um, I will be buying myself one of these pens. Um, definitely. I don't know if it'll be my next purchase because I've got a special one coming up, I think, but, uh, I will definitely, this is in my top five that I want to buy for sure. Um, but let's jump into the writing sample and I'll tell you a bit more about it. So apparently I can't spell dog, but hey. <laughs> um, so this is the uh, Parker Centennial Duofold um, medium gold nib. Uh, the ink is Gerba Terre de Feu. And man, between this ink and this pen, the shading is just unreal. Really, really dig it. Um, as far as line variation goes, you can get a little bit. You can definitely get up to broad, although I would almost say that this nib 
it writes more on the broad side anyways. I wouldn't say it's a complete broad nib. I mean, physically, it's a medium, but it writes more like a medium to broad to me. Um, upside down. Writes very well, actually. Um, obviously not quite as wet. You're not going to get the same shading, um, but it definitely keeps up, and it is extraordinarily smooth. Um, both ways, to be honest. Regular, you know, and upside down. Very, very smooth. I'm very impressed. Um, I really, really like the way this pen writes. I would prefer maybe to have a fine, but I know most of these pens only come with a medium. Um, but I really, really, really like the way that it feels. Um, as far as wetness goes, it's appropriately wet. Um, it's not a, like a, a gusher or anything, um, but you're definitely going to get some good flow, which really lends well to shading. And I really, really appreciate that. Whatever. Apparently I can't spell right. Absolutely no issues whatsoever keeping up. Um, I really, really, really like this pen. Um, because of the staining issue, I don't know if I would get ivory, despite the fact that I really actually love the outside color. Um, you can't see any of the staining, to be honest. I mean, like I said, it's basically just in the cap that you can see it. Um, again, I would prefer maybe a fine nib, but this medium nib is really, really great. Um, would I recommend it? Absolutely yes. Um, without a doubt, I would recommend it. Uh, but guys, that would be it for me today. Uh, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you really like the video and haven't yet done so already, please hit that subscribe button. I make videos every Monday and Friday um, and even possibly Tuesdays when Tuesday Tea Time comes out. Uh, don't be afraid of that comment section. Um, any comments, questions, concerns, throw them down there. I read them all and I try to answer them all as fast as I can. Cool. I will see you guys next time. Bye.